Hey folks, this is Ben here from the Fiberglass Factory. Today I'm just going to be showing you how to do a basic fiberglass repair. So this is um, this could be any sort of um, crack here that that's occurred from a body kit, spoiler, uh, bonnet scoop, whatever you know. So this is this just happens to be a bonnet scoop. Anyway, um, here we are. We've got a crack here now. What we have to do first is we have to get it to sit back in exactly the same position that it was in before it had the crack. As you can see, it's sort of it's it's a bit proud here. It's not quite like it's it's actually quite difficult to get it to sit back because all the fibres are torn and broken. It's hard to get it to sit back exactly where it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run the grinder through here a little bit just to. Um, sort of separated a bit more so it sits back how it was but I don't want to run it all the way through because I want some datum points here that I can work from so that um, just to make sure I get it back in exactly the same position so we know the thing's going to fit right. Now there's another thing you can do is you can whatever you're fitting it to if you've got the car there then you can fit it to the thing while you're doing it to make sure that it, it is in exactly the same position but generally speaking you can get it to to sit back in exactly the same position if, with just a little bit of playing with it. All right, so I'm just gonna chuck my mask on. Gonna just take a little bit out of the top of it. This is just relieving some pressure. I can feel that's feeling better already. All right, but I've still got this down the bottom here where I can line up absolutely perfect. Now that, now that just feels, that's how it was. I can feel it. There's no, um, there's no gap there. We're laughing. All right, now the next thing we have to do is we have to, ha we have actually have to uh, fix it in position somehow. Now I'm gonna be using today the hot glue gun and I've just got some little stitches here that I'm using, which are just little bits of scrap fiberglass. Now you could use anything, but something fairly stiff is good. A bit of timber, MDF, chipboard, whatever. All right, so we're just gonna... Right. The good thing about hot glue is it goes off fast and it holds it very strong. Now I'm happy with that, just check that. The reason we're doing this on the outside is because we want, need to make sure the outside is what we need to have absolutely perfect. Once this has gone off, the larger the split, the more stitches you have to use. Um, make sure everything's lining up just as it was. Very happy with that. That's just lined up absolutely perfect. Now, um, the other, what you can do if you don't have a hot glue gun, you can prep it and you can body fill um, some stitches over there. Um, I'm not sure. Or you could glue. You could glue some patches over there. You, if with heavier duty sort of um, fiberglass stuff that you're fixing, then you, you often use screws, screws and timber, or screws and steel, just to um, just to bring it back together so it's held in position. All right, now that's um, that's almost gone off. Enough. We can move it. All right. Now we're going to flip it over. Have a look on the inside. Yep, she's all lined up perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along with the grinder. I'm just going to prepare it so that we can lay a sheet of glass over the back of it just to give it some strength. percent in of catalyst and we've got a bit of uh, about a couple of mil of DMA just to speed the process up. We don't want to be waiting all night for this. Now just give this a quick stir. 
full ice cream and container or well, milk container is perfect for this kind of job. Now I've pre-cut the glass. I've, I've prepared basically an inch past where the cut is because the, the glass strands are only 50 mil long anyway. So there's no, no gain out of going in anywhere past an inch or 25 mil. Alright, so there we are. I've tried to take a little bit more off here because um, I don't want this to be too much higher than where the original spot was. So um, I'll probably take a bit off it after, it after the repair's gone off so that we can get it back to original thickness. Try and get a good brush wheel. <laughs> Ideally, you'd roll it out, but I um, I've done this a few times, and I know how much resin I've got to get down, and I can get the air out with just the brush. So it's not making the job very easy. With a good brush, this is this will be much easier. Easier. All right. Just got to work all the air out, and you got it. When you're not using a roller, you want to make sure it's a little bit wetter than what you might normally have when you're laminating because otherwise it tends to drain a little bit and you end up with air in it. The air sort of comes back on you. Okay. Now I've made sure it comes over the edge a bit too because just because of the nature of sharp angles it doesn't like to it doesn't like to stay down. But I've so I've gone over a bit further. That way it'll it'll stay in that position. Alright, what we're gonna do, we're gonna wait for this to go off. Once it's gone off, then we'll flip it over and then we'll we'll finish off the other side. All right, folks, so we've put our patch over the back. If you wanted a better blend, then you could tear the tear the edges rather than having a cut. See, uh, mine was cut. If you wanted it, it looked a bit neater on the back. Okay, so we're ready to work on the front side of it again. Now we've got this, this little patch here that was holding it all together. Just want to get rid of the hot glue. As you can see, it sticks pretty good. Hot glue is fiberglass's best friend, I'll tell you. Okay, now, where some people go wrong, they'll just body fill in the crack there. And uh, the problem with that is you've always got movement happening like through the whenever it's on a vehicle and so you're going to end up with these crack lines come through here so to avoid this what we're going to do is we're going to just V this out through here so there's actually no sharp edges and um, same same deal here even though there's no actual um, there's no gap there it's still going to produce crack lines because it's a butt join and we can't have butt joins we've got to have uh, lap joins that's what we're aiming for all right so i'm going to put my mask on again and we're going to v this out and then we can um fiberglass over the top of it or you can just you can just body fill it but it's better to put a little strip of glass over there before you use filler
Yeah, if you were, if you were just going to do body filler, then you must get to the bottom of the crack. You must get to the bottom where there's absolutely no sharp joints. Because we're going to glass over the top of it, you actually don't need to go right down to the very bottom because the glass on top is going to hold it all together. But you don't want to be relying on body filler to hold things together. It's got to be um, uh, either you get to the very bottom of the crack and then you fill, or um, or you glass over the top of it, which is um, which tends to be better. So I'm going to just take it down a little bit more. I want to make sure I get a, a nice deep groove in there. So we can get a good a good one mil of glass in there. We've got a one mil strip on, uh, behind it. We want a one mil strip on top as well. Okay. Folks, so this is a little bit of 450. I used a bit of 450 mat on the other side as well. A bit of chop strands. And then I've just mixed up a bit more resin. And we're going to... I'm going to get this happening. And then after this, it's just purely body work that you normally do. Just to finish it off. Could have cut the glass a little bit smaller. Mm, it'll just, it'll just come off anyway. Once we run the grinder over it, we can touch it up. There we go, folks. So we just, um, we've got this pretty much finished. I'm just gonna do a grind over the top of it just to prepare it for body fill, and then that's as far as we're gonna go in this video. But um, one thing I want to say is that it's not that difficult. But you do have to have all the, all the chemicals right. <laughs> Otherwise, you can end up with disastrous results. So uh, good tradesmen will make things look easy. So it is, a, it is pretty basic, but um, there is lots of things you have to be very careful with, particularly when you're mi mixing the chemicals. And, um, and just to make sure you get all the air out and stuff, you can't, you can't have air in there. Um, yeah, that, that won't produce a, a proper good result. All right, I'm just gonna buzz over the top of this with a grinder. You maybe, um, if you're not proficient with the grinder, then maybe the grinder's not the best thing for you to use. You might wanna use a, a sander, or, um, or just be very careful with the grinder because you can end up doing more damage than good um, if you're not as proficient with it. All right, here we go. These bits around the edge, they're not sticking to it because it hasn't been prepped. I purposely didn't prep the sides so that we can just get keep the fiberglass where it, where the um, where we'd actually prepped it. So. Gonna take a little bit off the bottom just to get that the same part.
Then just before filler, you just need to take the very top off here, just so that it's prepped for filler. So I'll just do that quickly, and then and then she's good to to be finished off. There we go. Let us know if there's anything else you want us to show you about fiberglass. It actually doesn't need much at all in there now. Um, with the right amount of glass in there, she's just probably needs half a mil of filler or something, and it, and it, um, you wouldn't even notice that it's been repaired. And it'll it'll be good for for as many years as the parts good for. So, thanks for watching.